up guys, it's Mr. Adesai here. So today I'm going to be showing off um, some gameplay with my Champion League hanger here. Um, I want to give a little bit of advice on piloting leeches, because recently the leeches has actually come to the uh, workshop, so I'm sure a lot of players will be building up with those components that they got from whenever ago. So if you got like components through the special delivery from Halloween and Christmas and you almost have a leech, you could finish it off and you maybe through Yandi Showdown or Christmas you got the special leech skins like I did and you'll actually be able to, you know, uh, run a leech. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the most cost effective builds um, and how you can play even if you're at low levels in high leagues against higher level players using some different strategies and such. So here I actually have a lower level leech because I wanted to show you guys just how it is like to play with a lower level leech in um, Champions League. Uh, I've put last stand on each of my leeches. I think last stand is an extremely important thing and you should definitely try to invest that 5,000 gold into getting one. However, mine are only at level 1 and um, so they are still useful, however they are not perfect. And I think that definitely at level, it, and you need to get it to at least like level 2 or 3 for it to start, start really ramping up in the usefulness. Also, all of my leeches are actually equipped with storms here, uh, one of which uh, each storm is at level 5 and all the other ones are level 10. Uh, what well, this one has actually level 6. Um, so, th and this one's level 10, 6 as well, okay. So, um, storms are extremely cost effective weapons. I really recommend that if you're running a leech, since you have to run 4 weapons, you would want to run 4 inexpensive weapons. So, storms, getting 4 of them, while they are pretty expensive in terms of gold, you can get gold pretty easily through chests and such. And if you actually open a lot of these silver chests, you have a chance of getting a storm. I'll actually do a silver chest open right here, just see what I get. Okay, got me some gold, that's nice. So, yeah. Um, get, getting these storms, you know, it'll get, you can get some gold and get, uh, you can get them from silver chests and they are very easy to level up. I can't even tell you, they level up so quickly and they're so cheap and a couple of mine are actually pre-economy, so they level up even quicker. So these things are actually, these are absolutely amazing, every free player's dream. Also, uh, Avengers are absolutely, they're beautiful weapons. Um, you could use Vipers as well, but like Vipers, again, they're just like how Corona is the storm. I don't think that Corona or Viper or Storm or Avenger, any of them are particularly better than each other, they just have different uses. So you can use four Coronas on a leech, however the thing is, Storms will do more damage. So if you're fighting Titans and tanks, you'll actually be doing more damage through using your Corona, through using your Storms. And uh, Coronas actually will help you if you're fighting against faster robots since you can lock them down. And uh, bet between Avengers and Vipers, Vipers will do better against robots that have damage over time, whereas uh, Avengers will do better against robots that don't have damage or don't have um, uh, damage resistance. So the damage over time is really helpful against damage resistance, and uh, the lockdown is helpful against fast robots, and that's just how it is. So if you can use the cheaper option, I'd really recommend that you try to get the use the cheaper option. Like if you actually see here, I do have Coronas. I've got a couple of them leveled here. One of them at level one, and another one here at level seven. So I could put them on a leech if I wanted to, but I recognize that long-term leveling them up is going to be extremely expensive, so I would much rather invest in just using Storms and Avengers, because they are much cheaper. Uh, when it comes to light slots, if you're using a Phantom, you can use Gusts. However, Gusts got nerfed not long ago, so they are not as powerful as using Halos. And I'd probably recommend still using Halos over Gusts, just because they're more powerful than Gusts are in basically every way. However, as it, it, as it stands now, Avengers and Storms are definitely best weapons for you, no matter what, if you're trying to stay on a budget. Now pilot abilities. I want to be here. I'll show you. Quartermaster is an amazing pilot ability. This I use this on all of my leeches because when you're running leech, you're gonna have, let's face it. Basically, every leech is running a phase shift. A phase shift is base is completely necessary to do well with the leech. It helps you get away and such. And phase shift is expensive. I have many modules here that are I mean power cells that I've been getting through these chests, but I don't want to burn through them. And using this quartermaster ability is extremely useful. It takes a whole 10 power cells off of your uh, phase shift use. So instead of 40, it only costs 30 power cells. So it's almost as if you're just using a normal 20 power cell ability, but you know, just a little bit more expensive. So it is, you know, very useful. Uh, as for other pilot abilities, mechanic is amazing. Mechanic, I recommend it on any bot you ever use, 100%. Mechanic is the best ability in the game, hands down. 
I mean, I don't think that there's any ability that even comes close to this. It ge it's literally just a silver generator, and it passive regeneration doesn't get better than that. Sharpshooter is another one of those just great abilities. I run it for both of my both my Aljuns and my leeches. For Storms and Avengers, they are so powerful, and they will make you really reach out and touch and shoot much further than you normally would because, you know, Coronas and Vipers, they have that range on you, and if you're running Sharpshooter, you'll be able to match them a little better. And then, of course, uh, Armor Expert, and uh, yeah, that's it. Armor Expert is very powerful. It will make sure that you, well, don't die. Uh, I actually run Armor Expert on my Aldrins as well, and Wonder Worker instead of, um, what's it called? I run Water Wonder Worker instead of Quartermaster because I only use Shield Breakers, so I don't need the, the discount to use them. And um, the armor expert is always helpful for making sure that it actually makes it so that, like, if you just get your robots to level 9, if you're using all these armor helping modules, I, I don't really use armor modules on the Aldrins because they're most, mostly def uh, attack oriented, but if you use, like, the 15% extra armor, it's like giving your robot, like, a couple level boosts, which is really helpful. Anyway, that's enough explaining. Actually, one more thing. Uh, the, here, are the Al this is my Ao Ming. I might do some gameplay with the Arthur in another video, because I do actually have an Arthur there that I won from a giveaway. Uh, but this Alming is very, very useful as well. Um, of the Titans, if you're grinding out that Platinum through the daily tasks, I recommend you definitely get this. This is, uh, it's a very powerful Titan. Um, you upgrade it here, and uh, I'd recommend specking into Engine and Hull. Uh, because engine will get you most of that ability repair and speed, which titans definitely need, and hull will get you those base defense points. I think core is somewhat useful. I, I mostly went upgraded it a little bit more than hull because I wanted to get that additional damage. And uh, I also recommend that you definitely upgrade your weapons because um, they will get much more damage mitigation. I believe actually if you get these max, they will get to 100% damage mitigation, which is pretty great. Anyway, with that being said, let's get into a game. Alright, so here we've dropped in on Shenzhen, uh, Beacon Rush. I'm sorry for that long-winded explanation, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of uh, insight to how, you'll be, how you can more easily play these, but now I'll just show you what I actually mean. So, one thing that I think is really popular is, or not, not popular, one thing I think is really important is when you're fighting players, you want to make sure you check here and see if you see any really big clans that you know. So, here I see a player, also make sure you look at that last stand. So even if, you, if you're not familiar with all the clans on whatever OS you play on, you can look at that, at that uh, last stand, and it'll basically tell you, what, you know, high, how high level the player you're fighting is. So if you're fighting a higher level player, you will be, you'll know that you're going to have to be a little bit more careful. You know, I hear this guy's probably going to get me, because he has, he's really high level there. But you want to make sure that you do play a lot more careful around those players that have those high last stands and those players that are part of those big clans because they are going to obviously have much higher level gear than you have. So here I'm going to try to take this guy out now his last stand has ended. However, I suspect that he'll come in with another leech or something. Oh no, he actually came in with an Alja. So uh, yeah, definitely those top players, be careful around them now. He's used his ability, and his teammate there has used his ability. And once they land, I'm actually going to try to use my ability to take them out. So yeah, that last stand indicator is always a great help to tell you how high level they are. You know, if the last stand is either small or not there at all, you'll know that it's a lot less, they're going to be a lot less powerful of a player, and you can probably be more aggressive. But if the last stand is really large, or they're part of a big clan, then you'll know that you might want to play a lot more careful than I hear this guy, because his last stand was so big, he was able to actually, you know, he also anti stealth me, but I think I might uh, be able to corner shoot him a little bit with my Avengers. Uh, I'm out of ammo. Okay. And he seems, he's using actually a really good weapon that is good against other Aojuns. The Calamity is amazing against other Aojuns, but once again, just like any other weapon that's not Avenger or Storm, it's great, but it's hard to expect upgrade. So I think this is that same player, now he's just in the new robot. He's got me there after I use my ability, which is okay. I'm gonna spawn on this beacon. I got quite a few teammates here, and we're going to... I guess we're gonna push this beacon here, so... We have a leech here. I'm just gonna face shift like this, completely get out of the fight, and he's going to 
reduce his damage. So now I can actually fight him without even using my ability you know, because his damage is up. His damage is back up. Now I just use my ability to make sure I don't take as much damage as I can. And you know, now I can just do that. So everything's fine. Now uh, we are getting quite. We're getting four capped right now, so I'm going to try to go around here and take their beacon. But I need to make sure that well, before I even pop out this way, I have my ability ready, or at least one of them. So here we have that guy. Okay, so I'm about to get my my repulse ability, so I'm just gonna come here. Now I see this guy actually. You can see this thin purple line. That means he's using his repulse ability. So actually, I'm about to just you know I'm gonna be able to kill him quite quickly since he's now used both his face shift and his repulse. If we just chase him down here, he this Mercury. And now his last stand is activated, and I haven't even used any of my abilities yet. Now he's one of my abilities. Okay, now I have this other guy here, another leech. Uh, there's a, this guy, I believe, he's used a shield, so I'm gonna actually just fight him. While that leech is leeching, I'm not gonna do much damage to him. Now I have face shifted, and I'm going to try to attack this guy here. Just see if I can do damage with my last stand active, and I'm probably gonna die here. Alright. So, uh, I'm gonna spawn with my Outbreak right here and try to put as much damage down this middle line as I can. Now, there seems to be like a Hades, I think, right there, so I'm gonna shoot him. I'm taking a lot of damage since I spawned in the middle, but I just wanted to put a lot of damage in that middle part because there were some important robots there that I want to take care of. So, now there's an Outgen here, and, uh, he seems to just be standing there, so I'm, he's locked down, so I'm going to spawn in this, shoot him, try to force him to use his ability. No, he hasn't used it, he's just going to find cover. And I, honestly, I think this guy is a higher level player, he, and he has a last stand, so I actually could force me to use my ability. But I'm still, since he only has one Avenger and one Ember, it's going to be a lot harder for him to hit me with the Ember. I can just try to dodge that Ember and you know, get him down to his last stand. He's going to definitely be trying to protect that last stand and not use it. So now I'm just hiding here, waiting for my Avengers to reload. Uh, he's definitely just shooting that corner. Okay, so now he's used his ability. So he's going to be attacking this Titan. Uh, but the, tit the Titan's actually being protected by an Ares here, which is very helpful. A very nice Ares we have. Um, so now he's used his ability, and he went up there, and I can actually kill him with my ability. Just like that. So it, it, you do get in a, in a lot of these long-witted, no, no, you use your ability first battles, and uh, if they have higher levels than you, a lot of the time they'll be able to force you to use your ability. But you have to think outside of the box, you know, try to make them, you know, get their aim off. Because a lot of Algins, you know, they use embers. So if they're using embers, then just try to dodge. If they're using redeemers or something, try to get out of that 350 meter range. Because Avengers are really the amazing multi-tool. And you know, I absolutely cannot express enough how great Avengers and Storms are just because of the things that they do for that low price that they cost. So I used this, uh, I actually kind of wasted it because that guy, oh actually not really here. That guy had his shield up so I was able to get some something to use out of that. And a rampage on that guy. Uh, I'm going to try to run away but I think I'm going to die here to this, uh, yeah that guy killed me there, but, uh, see, we were getting 4 cap before, and look at this, now we're almost 4 capping them. And I have only one leech. Normally I'd spawn in the middle, but I need to play careful. I only have one robot, I want to get as much recording as I can for you guys, so I'm going to play a lot more carefully. Pretend everybody is, like, two levels higher than me, and, you know, shoot around corners and all that. So let's just look around this corner, we're going to see, I believe that there are two kids, and, are they, they might all be kids, actually. So, I can just probably push in from the back and get a lot of damage in on them. Oh, there's an Arthur, actually. Okay. So this guy, he seems to be reloading. He doesn't have his ability active. Now he has his ability active. Oh, when you're fighting a kid, even if you're in a leech, definitely stay out of that ring of fire. Because that ring of fire will completely bypass your damage resistance. It does a ton of damage to you. It's really, it's really bad to go in there. It's not going to help you with your repulse. Uh, and you won't be doing as much damage back as you'll be taking. Anyway, um, there we go, so we had a nice first game there. Um, let's just look at some of our teammates. So this was number one on our team, and uh, we see the things he's using. He's using some pretty cool things, some off-meta things, a lot of higher level things though. Uh, now here's this one guy, this was the first leech that we fought. And yeah, he's definitely got like all those max last stands, leeches, and algins. He's running actually a similar hangar to mine, except with the more expensive weapons, and he has a kid instead of elming. 
and he was uh, with this other high level guy here. Let's just look at him. So yeah, again, again the leeches, phantoms, air algins are very popular. Uh, let's see, second place, how he did. Now, this guy is uh, another one of those like lower level players that are somehow made it in the Champion League. He's actually also running off level, uh, off meta things. So that's actually a really good player. He managed to get up there. I don't really know how he didn't do as much damage. Uh, honestly, he might be running an honor booster because he didn't do that much damage. Uh, so let's see, and just check this guy out as well. Yeah, also another one of the players not have his high level things. I, I think this is a bit strange though. He bought a Caracer instead of buying an Al Ming for his kid. Uh, I don't know what I think about that. That's a bit weird, but yeah, each to their own. <laughs> anyway, let's get into one more battle just to show this things off and uh, that'll be the end of the video. Okay, so here we are on Power Plant. This is actually one of my favorite maps. I really do enjoy this map because it has a lot of corridors and such that you could uh, do a lot of trench shotgun fighting with. It's pretty fun. I like that. Um, I did want to talk about how, uh, yes, a lot of top players will be using phantoms in their hangar. However, I've sacrificed mine for my hangar, and that's for one reason. Phantom requires a lot of leveling to be useful, but Leech and Aljun are basically really powerful right off the bat. Like, I'm able to do quite a bit with just this level 5 leech. You know, really low. But, like, if I were to use a level 5 phantom, I'd get a So, you know, it really just goes to show the leeches and algins and stuff, they're very good damage dealers. So, I do have to sacrifice having a beacon capper so that I can deal a lot more damage. And it still does end up helping win the game and get me in higher placing and gain silver and such. Because you just do tons of damage. Like, you can take out tanks and stuff with this, you can take beacons as well because the leech itself is pretty fast. It's just having a single bot for beacon capping it is a bit ineffective in terms of price because you have to upgrade that bot a lot to so you get it not only its max speed, but its max health. Because the Phantom has a lot where it needs a lot of health. And a lot of those, you see a lot, you have a lot of invincible Phantoms. They're not really invincible, they just feel like it's so hard to kill. Anyway, uh, this phase shift was kind of unnecessary, this guy's going to kill me anyway, but I did want to just maybe try to proc his last spin, but I wasn't able to. Maybe if uh, my guns didn't get shot off. Now we have this Aldrin, I managed to spawn behind him. So I'm use my ability here and barrel shot him. Hope that he doesn't use his to get his ability back. We have a Raijin there. Um, for a lot of us, if you're trying to be a free play player, and you see a lot of players like that, that's definitely a prime target for you because those have a lot of raw health instead of just uh, damage resistance like the Falcon. So you get a lot of damage in on them for basically free and it gives you tons of silver. So here I'm just going to attack this Raijin here. And he's turned around to his physical shields to me, but I can destroy his physical shields with my storms quite effectively. It still does, it's really showing how high the health of the Ryzen is. Uh, now I'm on my last hand. I'm not going to bother using the face shift on this one. I'm just going to you know, accept that I'm dead and use my third leech here. See if I can take this guy down because he has no ability. Beacon modes, there's a lot of those around. You can use them to really help you walk around the pillar. Okay, so this guy actually, I think his adventures are reloaded. Shoot, shoot, ah. So I thought I had clicked my last stand there, but I clicked my, uh, my ability, but I guess I missed it by a little bit. I'm taking a bunch of damage. It's something you gotta watch out for. 
This guy has his last stand down and he's flying, and I actually flew after him, which means once he lands, I can kill him pretty easily. And, uh, with the help of that Alming as well, I can take him out with those really high damage missiles. And now this guy is just on his, one of his last ones. Uh, I'm actually really impatient when I get some damage in, so I'm just going to spawn into my Alming and just radio out him. Oh, never mind, okay. okay. So I couldn't get any damage on there, but uh, yeah, it's a nice game we got there. Anyway, um, uh, that's about it for this. Uh, looks like I've gone up in the operation. Okay, cool. Well, anyway, um, that's my hangar. That's all the advice that I have to show you guys on playing these leeches and algems and such. And uh, yeah, Especially if you're lower league, you're trying to use the meta a lot more without paying massive amounts. That's all I have really to show you guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video catch you on the flip side.